Well, uh, good morning everyone. It's June, not May, <laughs> 2016, and this is uh, Dr. Pan Gabriel with one of my latest talks. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, I've given it the title, The Shocking Truth No One Talks About, How to Blossom and Bloom as a Human. I repeat, the shocking truth no one talks about, how to blossom and bloom as a human. I was listening to a scientist uh, the other day, wonderful uh, individual, wonderful chap, and uh, he was talking about how to blossom and bloom as a human as well. And he quoted various, um, actually quite a few, scientific experiments. He's written whole books uh, full of such experiments uh, to prove the point that he and the other scientists had extrapolated from the various scientific experiments that had already been conducted to prove that the only way, quote-unquote, to blossom and bloom as a human was to follow the advice these various scientists had postulated. And the conclusion that these scientists came to was this. In order to bloom and blossom as a human, you have to meditate every day for at least 30 minutes and to visualize and feel, quote-unquote, and fake it till you make it, quote-unquote, type of philosophy. Now, I totally disagree with this, but we'll get there. But let's go back to the scientists and, and how, how, does, how, how does this scientifically change your reality according to them? People, they proved, quote-unquote, through their experiments, walked after being paralyzed for years, my friends. People made their cancers disappear. Ordinary people like you and me, conquered just about every possible malady known to man. Now, very important, these dramatic and encouraging and thrilling healings truly did happen. I repeat, they truly did happen. But here is the mind-blowing thing. All these scientists Although mavericks, mind you, were all dead wrong about the true cause of what created the miracles. Now, just who do I think I am to make such a bold claim? Okay, the least of my accomplishments is this. I have a PhD in holistic nutrition. Since age 14, when in a moment of vivid clarity I saw right through the lie that the status quo had taught me about who and or what I am, about what our reality is, I have been on a quest, an endless earnest quest to find the truth and how to create my miracle life. My blog and YouTube channels my Twitter contain a lot of information on which this talk is based. Uh, you can view them in the information box of uh, the YouTube uh, on which this talk will be. Now, here are some of the miracles I personally facilitated. An African witch doctor saved my life when I was stung by a poisonous scorpion at age 5 in my native Africa. I put my life totally in his trust and I went with the flow and instead of dying, I lived. At age 17, my faith in the infinite, the God force, the creative intelligence, whatever you wish to call it, instantly healed my mother from life in a mental asylum by my calling on a man of God to anoint her with oil on her forehead and pray for her health. She escaped from the sanatorium, came to back to our home, caught two buses and was perfect till her death at age 75. 
I managed to stay a virgin till age 26 till I met and married my magnificent wife in a sex-crazed world. I have no idea how I did it. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, let's not get into that. I'm sure that was the God force in full force acting through me. After two years of marriage, we still had no children. I once again called on the same man of God to anoint both my wife and I with oil on our foreheads and pray for our health. My wife fell pregnant within the week and we had six wonderful daughters together. My third daughter woke up one morning and could not move one of her arms. My wife and I freaked. We took her to the best doctors who conducted the works kind of tests. Diagnosis? Extremely expensive bone marrow transplant. Assuming we could find a compatible, uh, a compatible donor and then, well, maybe a 25% chance she would move her arm again. I once again called on the man of God to pray for my daughter, to appeal to that God force. So we all got down on our knees and he took a little glass vial uh, or file filled with olive oil out of his pocket and he rubbed some on her forehead for those who are interested uh, the Bible refers to that as anointing the sick with oil etc he laid his hands on her head and said a short prayer to that God force that higher power the divinity the universe God etc to please heal our little girl as we opened our eyes after saying Amen I mean in Greek <laughs> I am Helene Greek you guys call us Greeks we call ourselves Helenes Elenes <laughs> uh, so and what does uh, I mean or amen mean it simply means so be it and my little girl began moving her arm and has not st has not stopped doing so 28 years later she's now a physiotherapist bodybuilder super strong and in great health at another time in my life I needed an income and I needed it now instantly so I went to my room alone and opened up a conversation with that higher power the God force and the long and the short of it was this I wept I yelled I pleaded I said I was not going to take no for an answer this went on for half an hour or so I wasn't timing it. Time is of no relevance anyway. After my chat with that God force, the higher power, divinity, I calmed myself down, composed myself, and went down to check my fax machine. This was long before the days of internet, emails, etc. And uh, lo and behold, the contract that I was struggling for, uh, for a month was there signed and accepted by all parties and it made no business sense if I were those parties I would not have agreed to such a venture yet the God force that higher power divinity saw fit to instantly place in my hands a real estate complex worth 1.2 million dollars with a net income of seven and a half thousand dollars per month and for only a thousand dollars down payment which I borrowed from my bank manager <laughs> cool once again this was my kind of miracle instant next miracle I'd like to talk about that I facilitated was uh, I've entitled healing insanity the police burst into the room just in time to pry the 17 year old boy's fingers loose from around his mother's throat before he had squeezed the life out of her. The young man was arrested and taken to a home for juvenile delinquents in a purposely unnamed town to protect the identities of the people involved in South Africa for psychological evaluation. The 12... I, I worked there, but we're coming there. The 12 year old boy, there's another boy now in the same place, could not speak a word and he was 12 years old already. His parents, too poor to afford private therapy, decided to ask the state for help. 
the young boy was also taken to the above halfway house where I worked for psychological evaluation. Now, both these two boys had been sentenced to life in mental institutions for the rest of their lives. Joe, let's call him Joe, as an incurable psychopath, the 17-year-old, and Bob, the 12-year-old, uh, not their real names, as mentally retarded. I took to the challenge of helping these two boys like a pig to mud. <laughs> I began spending time with these two boys as much time as I possibly could. I spent hours just talking with them, befriending them. I played soccer and cricket with them. We threw the discus and the javelin. We ran around reveling in the raw energy of youth. I was only 22 years old at the time. Slowly, imperceptibly, a change began occurring in the characters and personalities of both these boys. Joe, the 17-year-old, began to volunteer to help us with the younger boys. It turned out he was a natural leader. We appointed him as a prefect or monitor, as we would say in America. Bob, the 12-year-old, began to speak almost overnight, fluently, and in a few weeks, he was fluent in both the official languages of South Africa back then, English and Afrikaans. This, as I say, was before the dismantling of apartheid, of course. The resident shrinks were stunned at the positive metamorphosis in the mental well-being of the two boys. They decided to give them a new battery of psychological tests, which both boys passed with flying colors as if a human being needs shrink tests to declare him compass menti. That's another story. Manifesting themselves as perfectly normal. Oh. Another time, one of the best things that ever happened to me was when I was, 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 when I was sentenced to death by firing squad. You heard right. I was sentenced to death by firing squad at the tender age of about 20. I was drafted against my will in South Africa's apartheid defense force, where as a non-combatant, I stuck out like a sore thumb and was mistreated at every turn, court-martialed for being a non-combatant, and was sent an arm to the war zone in a foreign country, Southwest Africa. It was then called, now it's called Namibia. I was denied food and water by my own officers ridiculed and mocked at every turn. I hold the distinction of being a four-year war veteran on the borders of South Africa, all of it unarmed. I never once violated my non-combatant code, even though they decided one day to shoot me by firing squad in the desert of Avamboland in Namibia. Those four years did not take place uh, all at once, it would go one year at a time, six months at a time, etc. And all in all, it was about four years. I was about 30 by the time I was done with this nightmare. The commandant explained um, to my regimental soldier major, who had decided to shoot me, that he couldn't shoot me by firing squad. It was my legal right to take the stand I had taken. <laughs> Hell hath no fury though, as the saying goes, as a regimental soldier major losing face like that. The man persecuted me at every chance he got. But you know what? I did my job so well that he could find no fault. Also, I volunteered to stand guard unarmed on the Zambezi River facing the enemy, quote unquote. And I did many times. Finally, I convinced him that I was no coward, that I was not shirking my duty, but that, I had, but that I had a conviction, a spiritual and mental and emotional conviction that was different to his. I wasn't going to kill anyone just because the government told me to. No way. <laughs> so he learned to respect my stand as I did his. We're free agents, or so they tell us. Not really. 99.99% of us are slaves. So about a week before the end of our tour of duty, 
He called me to the front of the morning parade facing the whole of our battalion. He put his arm around me and declared to all that he was now my friend and that if anyone messed with me, they were messing with him. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. I loved, I loved my time <laughs> in the deserts of Africa. <laughs> Spreading love and truth <laughs> and holiness and sacredness and joy. As a holistic healer, I facilitated the healing of a young African woman in South Africa from full-blown HIV via her listening to my healing hypnotherapy tape for 90 days. Blood tests showed her HIV had disappeared. The medical doctors, as they typically do, dismissed the case as anecdotal, quote unquote. As a holistic healer, I facilitated the healing of cancer many times, diabetes, arthritis, infertility, insomnia, depression, schizophrenia, ADD, infections that would have led to death, etc., etc. The cases are too numerous to enumerate here. Now, a huge caveat, my friends. Am I so arrogant and so delusional as to say that I healed all those people who came to me of those diseases? Hell no. No way. I healed no one. The God forced did. In my humble opinion, only a delusional healer would claim that he really heals. I was merely the facilitator of the God force. And of course, there were many whom I could not help, obviously. Each person is different. Each person must live their own destiny, whatever that is. <coughs> Excuse me, drink of water here. Okay, enough of me. I could go on, but read my books on Amazon. The one that uh, I recommend is called Enter Your Paradise Now by Dr. Pan Gabriel. Enter Your Paradise Now by Dr. Pan, P-A-N, Gabriel, G-A-B-R-I-E-L, on Amazon. So, what is my truth regarding blossoming and blooming as a human? What is it that will self-actualize us? What is it that will make us happy, wealthy, healthy, and cause us to bloom and blossom like unique Namaqualand flowers? that do so every year, briefly, for a time in South Africa, as you travel on your way uh, down to the west coast of South Africa, one of the many, many paradises on this beautiful orb we call Earth. Yeah, in Greek, in Helene. <laughs> so, for 99, Comma nine nine percent of us, the truth is this. This is the only truth that will make us happy, wealthy, healthy, and cause us to bloom and blossom like unique Namakwaland flowers. We have to be a part of a living, vital, God force community. Nothing else. Okay, no meditating. No visualizing, no feeling it, no rewiring your brain is going to do it for you. You have to be part of a living, vital, God force community being the unique you. Or how did uh, the singer uh, Sting put it in his beautiful song, I'm an Englishman in New York. Be yourself no matter what they say. Be your authentic self no matter what they say as part of a living, vital, God force community. Ah, living examples among us or not so among us anymore? The great Gandhi. He bloomed and blossomed as part of his community. Otherwise, no one would have heard of him. <laughs> Martin Luther King bloomed and blossomed as part of his community 
otherwise no one would have heard of him. Jean d'Arc, as the French say, or Joan of Arc, bloomed and blossomed as part of her community, otherwise no one would have heard of her. Who do you think bought Henry Ford's cars? <laughs> Marconi's radios, Edison's light bulbs, etc., etc., ad infinitum. What do you think caused them to go on in the face of great adversity and ridicule like the Wright brothers? <laughs> You're gonna fly? Ha ha ha! Tell us another one, idiots! <laughs> okay? So, to end off, you can meditate for 30 minutes every day. Well, nothing wrong with that, by the way. I encourage you to. It's wonderful. I do it. You can visualize and feel and fake it till you make it. You can rewire the circuits in your brain till you're blue in the face. To absolutely no avail unless you can concomitantly, concomitantly, sorry, or along with that, along with the meditation, along with the visualizing, the rewiring of your brain, you also have to be a vital part, a living part of a living, wholesome, God force community. Nothing else will do it for us. Nothing else. I love you all. This is Dr. Pan. Till next time, take care. <laughs>